Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the Baby Ape Micro Quadcopter by Darwin FPV. Darwin FPV is a company that specializes in making budget-friendly quadcopters such as the Baby Ape which costs less than $80. And in this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up, give you my feedback after testing it out and show you some flat footage. The Baby Ape is available in two versions pro and non-pro. I've got the non-pro version which is bundled with a generic FPV camera and the pro version is bundled with a Cadex Ant nano-sized FPV camera. It is also available in different colors so you'll be able to customize the colors of the propellers and the color of the 3D printed TPU part on the back of the quadcopter and just like all the current quadcopters which are available by Darwin FPV it's only available in a plug and play version, which means that you'll need to install your own radio receiver. In terms of packaging, inside the box, along with the quadcopter, you're getting a single set of Gemfan Hurricane 3016 propellers, so you better purchase more propellers in case you're going to go for this quadcopter. You're also getting the wiring diagram of the all-in-one flight controller, which is important because you are going to need to install your own radio receiver. And you're also getting a bag that contains some zip ties, a battery Velcro strap, a sticker with the Darwin FPB logo, some spare screws, and plenty of rubber bands for securing the battery to the top plate. In terms of specs, the Baby Ape features 1104 4300 kV motors. They can handle up to 3S batteries, the diameter of their motor shaft is 1.5 mm, and while they look generic, they are actually made by Inian Motors, the company behind Emax, and it was used a while ago by one of their drones. These motors are very cheap, they cost about $2.5 a piece, so in case you are going to break one or more motors, it's going to be very cheap to replace them. The motors are connected using race wires to the all-in-one flight controller, so on each arm you can find two LEDs, and on the center of the quadcopter you can find an all-in-one F4 flight controller that features an integrated 15 amperes BLLES 4-in-1 ESC, and above it you can find a 40 channels VTX that supports TBS smart audio protocol and has a maximum output power of 200 milliwatts. In addition, on the back of the frame, you can find a linear antenna which is connected to the VTX and secured to the quadcopter using a 3D printed TPU part. It's using an XT30 battery connector and the battery is going to be mounted on the top plate. As for the frame, its wheelbase is 142 mm and it features a true X pattern. The thickness of each replaceable carbon fiber arm is 2.5 mm and its width is 5.7 mm. The thickness of the bottom and top carbon fiber plates is 1.5 mm. The distance between them is 15 mm. The thickness of the side carbon fiber plates which secure the FPV camera is 1.5 mm and without the battery, the Baby Ape weighs about 75 grams. As I mentioned before, the Baby Ape is only available as a plug and play module, which means that you'll need to install your own radio receiver. In order to access the flight controller, you'll need to disassemble the top plate. It is done by unscrewing these four Phillips screws from the top side of the quadcopter. And unfortunately, it doesn't come with wires which are pre-wired to the relevant pads on the flight controller. I find it a little bit strange since this quadcopter is beginners oriented. However, probably it is the way it is because they are trying to reduce the cost. Here is a diagram of the flight controller. I've wired the FR Sky XM Plus radio receiver to the SBUS pads over here. So the SBUS signal from the radio receiver is wired to the SBUS pad on the flight controller, ground to ground, and 5 volts to this pad over here, which is marked 4.5 volts, but it's sufficient for the radio receiver. You can also wire a DSMX radio receiver since it has a 3.3 volts pad over here and you can also wire crossfire or similar radio receivers that require a full dual port using the RX and TX1 pads. As for Betaflight configuration, after installing your radio receiver, 
make sure that under the port section, the serial rig switch is enabled next to your one and under the configuration section, make sure that it is configured properly. As for the rest of the settings, they are pretty much the default ones, so the baby ape is not pre-tuned for you, and in case something went wrong and you'd like to revert the settings to the original ones, you can use the dump file, which is linked down below. For that, you'll need to head over to the CLI tab, hit the load from file button, and select the file that you just downloaded, hit execute, and once the CLI is done loading all the settings, don't forget to type save and press enter in order to save the settings. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the Baby Ape 3. I've tested it using both 2S and 3S batteries. I definitely do not recommend to fly it using 2S batteries because the performance is going to suffer and the quadcopter is going to feel underpowered. And using the 450 and 520 mAh 3S batteries, you can expect about 4 minutes of flight time. In terms of performance, I think that the quadcopter definitely needs some tuning, but I think that the stock settings are going to be okay, at least as a starting point. And of course, the highlight of this quadcopter is its price, because overall for $79, you are getting a very good value for money. It doesn't feature high-end components, but still for its price, the quality is very decent. In addition, if combined with an entry-level radar controller and goggles, and remember that you'll also need to purchase battery charger and batteries, you'll be able to get a starter set for less than $200, which is going to be appealing for many beginners. So I think that especially if you're in the budget, the Baby Ape 3 is definitely something that you'd like to consider. In terms of durability, as far as I can tell, this is not a very fragile build, and it's a good thing that the camera lens is properly protected by the side plates. However, on a bad crash, one or more arm is very likely to break, so I recommend to purchase a set of arms. They cost about $12 for four of them, and if you'd like to stay on the safe side, you can also purchase an extra frame, which costs about $18. In my opinion, the main downside of the version that I've tested is that the non-pro version features a very mediocre FPV camera. So in case you would like to better enjoy this quadcopter, I recommend to add the extra $12 and go with the Cadex and camera as it is much better than this camera. In addition, from time to time, I recommend to check the status of these Philips screws in order to make sure that they are not getting loose and if possible, I recommend to change them to M2 hex screws. Anyway, that's going to be it for my quick review of the Darwin FPV Baby Ape 3, and now I'm going to wrap up this video with some flight footage. As always, I thank you for watching my video, I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked this video, and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you in my next videos and goodbye.